When I was a kid, my parents argued frequently, almost every day. So it got to the point that in my little mind, I thought love was going to be in someone else's home, but not in ours. In high school, I became a little more confident of myself, and I had a high school girl, sweetheart. She was kind of quiet. She liked her neighborhood, Maspeth, Queens, and I was more adventurous. I worked as a messenger in Manhattan, and I had some simple ideas. Midtown was Midtown in the 30s. Uptown was up. Downtown with the crooked, windy streets was a place called Wall Street where people made a lot of good money. And I had another simple truism. Don't ever knock up your 16-year-old girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Years later, I went to college under the GI Bill. And I was living in East Village. And a couple introduced me to their friend. And at first time, I didn't think she liked me. Second time we met, I caught her looking at me. And finally she got up and she said, I want to go to another club. Come with me. So we go to this place called St. Adrian's with the bar on Broadway right off Bleecker Street. And I felt so many eyes on me. We were sitting in a booth drinking wine. And I know she liked to drink, and I was not a slouch. I would not pass up on a drink myself. But I felt people staring at us. And then I found out my quiet little friend, Carol, was a poet and an artist. She knew everyone in the place. She introduced me to artists, writers, photographers, actors. And I soon realized that despite the friendliness, the casual clothes, the smiles, the hearty laughs, the drinks, the art world is a world unto itself. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. And when an artist gets stabbed in the back, he or she really feels it. Carol wanted me to stay with her. I looked at her, she was two years older than I was. She was lost, she was trying to find herself. And to be honest, I was just too young to take on the responsibility of stepchildren, a house, and a home. I met Judy. We never talked. <laughs> Sex was automatic. And in the morning, I tell you, it was the most awkward feeling. She didn't say a word. <laughs> and in my befuddled mind, Judy did not drink, which I thought was extremely odd. <laughs> so needless to say, our relationship didn't last that long. It got to the point I would spend weekends at home by myself or meet my friends in a bar and we would talk about what's a good relationship or what do we want to be when we hit 30. And I met Elaine. There was no pressure, no lies, no forcing. It just came naturally. We held hands, we went to movies, we had a good time, we had sex. I trusted her, she trusted me and I listened to her. So what is love? Can you define love when even the great philosophers can't do that? Is love something, a compound of many things that we don't know about, maybe created in this strange library, laboratory by crazy scientists who mix this compound that binds one person to another and that allows two people to live together as equals? <laughs> 